No, Tibetan Buddhism has not put down new roots in the Alps. These frozen gnomes of Zurich are undertaking the latest low-tech cure to nighttime rumbles. Prescribed by this man, Dr. Milo Puhan, his team at the local hospital. The playing of the didgeridoo. Well, with the didgeridoo, we try to exercise the muscles of the upper airways, and thereby the collapsibility of the airways is reduced, so we don't snore anymore, and you have less sleep apneas. Snoring occurs when the muscles at the back of the throat relax and collapse in on one another, causing them to vibrate as we breathe in and out. In most cases, it simply causes a vibration and that annoying noise. But in some cases, the muscles get stuck together, blocking the airways and effectively stopping the patient from breathing. It's called sleep apnea. And at the very least, it leads to the patient constantly waking up. But in the worst cases, it results in high blood pressure and heart disease. But what is it about playing the didgeridoo that's so beneficial? Why not the bagpipes or the trombone? Well, in part, it's the sound of the didgeridoo. It seems that the low frequency sound gives the throat the perfect massage. Dr. Puhan's assistant, Dr. Brandley, will demonstrate to those of you who are not squeamish. With the bronchoscope passing through the nose, I can show you where the snoring happens and the apneas. Further down in the nose, you will see a valve which closes the nose through the mouth and where by vibration you have the snoring sound and by complete closure you have the apneas. And now a television first. Didgeridoo playing as never seen before from the inside. And you can immediately see what a workout the low frequency of the didgeridoo gives the throat. In addition to the good vibrations of the didgeridoo is the technique of circular breathing it requires. To keep the note continuous, players have to breathe in through the nose at the same time as breathing out through the mouth. And that strengthens exactly the muscles that collapse during snoring and sleep apnea. At first I had uh, 17 sleep apneas per hour in the night and uh, I was snoring. And after five to six months, I, was, I wasn't a snorer, I had no snoring uh, acoustic and uh, I hadn't apneas. There is one problem with the treatment there. There is a danger that for some people, one unacceptable noise has been replaced by another. <laughs> 